Welcome to my channel. My name is Yasha and I am back with another word. Um, this is going to be a long video, so we're going to pray and then I'm going to jump into it. I still have not found my tripod, if I'm being honest. I didn't actually look for it today. I was busy with other things because I actually do my nails myself, so that took a bit of time. Um, but... Um, yeah let's pray and then i'll deliver the word heavenly father we thank you for everything that you're doing for us thank you for the gift of life thank you for your spirit within us i ask heavenly father that you prepare the hearts of the listeners for the word you're about to deliver and may, and may they take heed to it in the mighty name of christ jesus i pray amen Alrighty. First Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 20 and it reads, Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. I'm going to see if I can read this in the New King James Version. Okay, so I'm going to read from verse 9 again in the NKJV. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor, adol nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Verse 12, going on to 20. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take members of Christ and make them members of a, a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. So every time you sleep with someone, every time you have sex with someone that you're not married to, you're becoming one flesh with them. And guess what? All of their spiritual baggage now becomes yours. Whatever spirits were afflicting them now start to afflict you. Whatever things they have been struggling with, you now start to struggle with. Anyway, let's go on. Um, verse 17, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who you have in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Like, don't you know this? You don't belong to yourself. You were bought at a price. Your life doesn't belong to you. Your body certainly does not belong to you. The Holy Spirit who is inside of you does not approve of you having sex outside of marriage. So every time it's like you're subjecting him to rape or um, molestation. For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which both are God's. Okay? So your body 
your body and your spirit both do not belong to you they belong to the lord so every time you're laying it low and spreading it wide you are literally violating the holy spirit who is in you and guess what after a while you're going to quench him you're grieving him each time you do that and it's not only fornication we're gonna get to that that's why i wanted to read the first two verses verse 9 and 10 in different versions because other versions actually mention gossipers and you just have to know that it's not only fornication but people who cheat people thieves greedy people greedy people drunkards people that are abusive male prostitutes people who worship idols none of these people will inherit the kingdom of god okay so you need to start living a changed life start living a different life because you were bought at a price that means that you don't get to do what you want so now that we've read the scripture i'm going to read the message that the holy spirit inspired me to write down earlier a lot of you think that it's okay to befriend homosexuals, adulterers, strippers, and believers who blaspheme the name of your God, etc. That in and of itself is not a sin because you often need to build some kind of rapport with someone in order to effectively share the message of the gospel. You also often cite the example of our Lord Yeshua and how he hung out with tax collectors and prostitutes, but how many of them remains the same? Hmm? How many of them remained the same? <laughs> Think about it. How many of them remained the same? Matthew, the former tax collector, repented and started following Yeshua and even wrote one of the four Gospels which give us an account of Yeshua's life, his genealogy and the miracles he performed along with his teachings as well the greatest one being the sermon on the mount right mary who was a prostitute was delivered from the demons that afflicted her and she lived a changed life and we see this in luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 3 i'm not sure if i can get to that quickly Okay, I'm there and it reads, Soon afterwards, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. Um, he took his 12 disciples with him and along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. So clearly, Jesus wasn't just hanging out with sinners just for the sake of hanging out with them. Like, oh, that's my, that's my husband. That's my, you know, that's my friend. That's my best friend. You have to stop this if you're not preaching the message of the gospel. So again, out of all the unrepentant sinners that you hang out with, how many have you shared the gospel with? How many have you led to Christ? How many of their lives are changed because of your friendship with them? If they haven't changed, then you probably are the one who's changing from all the compromise. What kinds of conversations do you have with these people? What shows do you watch with them or discuss? What kind of music do you listen to when you hang out? Do not be deceived. If you're not influencing them positively, then they are the ones that are influencing you. Now I'm gonna read from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 33 to 34. Um, NKJV and it reads do not be deceived evil company corrupts good habits awake to righteousness and do not sin for some do, do not have the knowledge of God I speak this to your shame okay I'm not even going to expound I feel like the apostle Paul just said everything that needs to be said there the second thing is repent okay 
Return to your first love and destroy the idols that you have raised and worshipped in the place of Yahweh. Whatever you've been idolizing has got to go. The Lord said that this is a time when you need to re-examine your walk with him and reevaluate some of your choices, decisions, and habits. It is time to recalibrate. The Lord had me deliver a message to someone concerning recalibrating recently, and he did the same thing with me last year in December. Like last year in December, that was my time to recalibrate, but concerning something completely different. So recalibration, as far as the Holy Spirit has explained to me, based on the dictionary definition as well as what he was pointing out to me is to reset your standard you're not resetting your standard according to what you already know but you're resetting your standard according to what he is revealing to you in this season and according to his word because that is like our map for this life that we're living okay his word it means that whatever it is that the world calls good but it is actually evil you call it evil because the word of God calls it evil. If the word of God calls something good, but the world is calling it bad, that means that you call it good because that is your standards, the standard of the Lord. Unless you're no longer his daughter or his son, then maybe we have nothing to talk about, okay? So there will be many various and different reasons why the Lord leads you to recalibrate. Um, it depends on your walk with him, on your personal life, the things that you're doing right in his sight and the things that you're doing wrong, places where you're missing the mark. He's going to show you all of that. But this is a season where you definitely need to dive deeper into his word and just pray more for guidance and ask him to show you where exactly this recalibration has to happen, okay? Some of you have become so hardened, this is something that he's saying right now, that just because some of us live in countries where corruption is so rife, you think that it's okay to bribe somebody to make something go faster for you or whatever, but that's still wrong. That's part of where you need that recalibration because you set your standard not according to your environment, you set your standard according to the Lord's standard for you as his son or daughter not according to your environment okay so when i had to recalibrate it was because my heart was sick from all the things that i was expecting to happen at a certain time and they didn't actually happen okay so i found myself swimming in a swamp of despondency i was so discouraged i was so disappointed in god i remember just laying on the floor rolling around i was like god i feel like you dropped the ball so hard on me i feel so betrayed i feel so let down <laughs> many ways to say the same thing okay i said all of it because i know that when i'm honest with him I give him a chance to speak to me concerning whatever it is that I would have said to him and I allow him to heal me and to recalibrate me, okay? So, um, okay, so my heart was sick because of hope deferred. So I needed to relearn the heart of God for me and to truly understand that he will not withhold any good thing from me. So I'm going to read Psalm 84 verse 11. Again, this is from the NKJV and it says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. All right. So the Lord also wants me to warn you to repent of your desire for miracles, not necessarily for him or having a closer relationship with him, but simply for miracles or for him to do the things that you desire, the things that you have been idolizing and putting above him. So he says, um, because of your desire for miracles, you have been deceived by sorcerers masquerading as prophets of God. Um, and that's where it ended. I feel like I have no right to add anything to that. <laughs> um, 
but I feel like you need to read Matthew chapter 12, just read the whole chapter, and also just pray specifically for your instructions with regards to this recalibration what does it look like for you what do you need to do do you need to go into a fast do you need to set a certain um, goal for yourself a target where you're like okay i need to read the four gospels within a month i need to read these books of the bible within a month just so you can have more knowledge of the word of god and from that you reset your heart and your mind so yeah that's it unless he sends me back with anything else that's basically everything that he asked me to say to you right now so recap the first thing is for you to look at your environment and bear in mind that bad company corrupts good morals bad according to god's standards not according to your standards okay and the second thing is for you to repent excuse me and to return to your first love tear down the asherah poles and the altars that you have erected for the different bales that you have been worshiping in your life i hope that this message will cause you to go before the lord and seek him and ask him what you need to do in this season before this year ends is a year of release and purpose okay so this is why you have to start your recalibration now because how are you going to be released into your purpose and and you're still operating in the way that you were operating in the past couple of years or past couple of months you have to have a renewed mind going into that season so i will come back with more details as he releases them to me but he said 2024 is a year of release and purpose all right bye